Greg, so take me out a thousand years, even 10,000 years, to the time when we have imaged every habitable planet, at least in our galaxy. There are two possibilities, I assume, that we can know that there's life, maybe not intelligent life, but maybe we can through signals, and we know for sure that there's no life at all, or there's certainly no intelligent life. Those two possibilities. Give me your sense, again, as a physicist and as a science fiction Mm -hmm. writer, of the meaning of each side of that extraordinarily important balance. If there's nothing there, there will be a general dismay. And it will also mean that our understanding of the the odds of life uh, at the moment are seriously wrong. If there is something there, then I expect you'll listen carefully for all the transmissions get a big budget to really look everywhere. And then there will arise a hunger to go. And if it's a long way away, we'll look at things that are really, really low probability, like wormholes or something that would allow us to skip quickly there, get there in a human lifetime, maybe close to life travel even, and visit. I, I think that's inevitable. Okay, I, I think that hunger is right, and I think, uh, of course, you're, you're, you're negating the possibility that the other inte- alien life can be, uh, it will be hostile. I mean, that's not impossible, <laughs> but I understand that. But suppose, again, it, that, that we have nothing. There's this, there is a dismay, but what follows from that? To, what, what do we think about ourselves at that point? Well, look at it this way. We're the brightest kid on the block. There's that consolation. <laughs> yeah. But we're also rather lonely. Yeah. Uh, and so I think it will also inspire some to say, look, there's a whole galaxy out there to be one. Mm. Let's go do it. So it's our backyard. Yeah. And we can go fill it up. And there's no property rights issue. 